Good afternoon. Uh, my name is uh, Adam Major or Adam Meyer. Both pronunciations are correct, depending on uh, I guess where you're located. And today I would like to speak to you about OpenQA, or to put it in uh, more verbosely, how you can do uh, a daily, fully tested uh, release of a Linux distribution. So first of all is uh, who am I? Uh, who is this person in front of you? Uh, I've been a Debian developer for some, uh, quite some time, since approximately 2001. I don't quite remember, it's been such a, such a long time. Over the years I've maintained a few packages here and there. Uh, I think uh, initially I packaged, I packaged the Ruby on Rails uh, before it became popular. I stopped maintaining it before it became unpopular. Um, uh, currently I maintain a Qt Creator. Which is very nice. It's uh, you probably would like to use it instead of VI or Emacs uh, if you do C or C++ development. Uh, you also, I also maintain ISC Kia, which uh, is the replacement for their current DHCP server. Uh, yeah, yeah. And uh, currently, for the last uh, year and a little bit, I have been working at SUSE, which would explain all the green in the presentation and on myself. Uh, where I also maintain some packages, uh, things like Node.js and uh, Boost and some other small things. Uh, but uh, this is also my first Debian conference and uh, it's been uh, a little bit eye-opening because there's a very uh, diverse crowd and uh, uh, a lot of people coming from a lot of different aspects, of life, not just the developers. It's very, it's very, it's very encouraging uh, about the community uh, around Debian. So getting back to what is OpenQA, uh, because we all hear there's, uh, there's OpenQA, OpenQA this, OpenQA that, uh, maybe you hear that, maybe not, maybe you don't even know what it is. So uh, the best way to describe it is a system under test monitoring framework. So it's not an application uh, testing framework, it's a complete system under test uh, 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 testing framework. It's also a web application. It's not something that you generally want to run uh, on, on your desktop. Uh, it doesn't uh, monitor any uh, application. It, it's a web application. So you have, uh, it, it runs uh, on, on a web server, uh, more or less. It's written in Perl. Uh, yeah, it's, it's still, still, I guess it's, a lot of people still like Perl. So it is written in Perl. The people working on OpenQA really, really like Perl, and it is using Modulus as a web framework, if that is interesting to you, but to me it is not, but uh, maybe it is. And, and the nice thing about OpenQA is that it can run multiple testing scenarios at the same time using uh, multiple uh, backends. Uh, generally, uh, what is being used is that it is using uh, QEMU plus VNC for uh, executing tests. So this is the most common uh, way that it runs tests uh, with, it's just Q. But there's also other backends that it can use, the uh, IPM uh, MI for direct uh, hardware tests, if somebody's interested with these things, Lidvert or S390, because this has a, a different backend. And in graphical form, uh, this is what uh, OpenQA actually looks like. The green bits is the OpenQA bit. And the best way to understand it is if you look at it from the bottom-up approach. So looking at the QEMU, you all know what QEMU is. It's a, it's a, it's a nice emulator right there and uh, virtual machines. And the OS auto-install, which is already in Debian, uh, this runs the actual tests uh, on the virtual machine uh, with VNC uh, as a connection, for example. And that's uh, where the open QA comes in, the green bits, the worker. The, each, there's one worker aside to one, to one instance of uh, OS uh, auto install. Uh, and this worker assigns specific tests to this uh, uh, OS auto install instance uh, to run the tests. And the, the worker is pretty dumb, just like the rest of it. Uh, so it needs to be assigned and managed by the actual web application, the web application manages the state uh, and with the, with the database and it communicates with the worker with 
a WebSocket, REST API, and generally it has things like a screenshot for use for matching, uh, something like a NFS uh, file system. And then the user uh, that is actually monitoring if the tests are working correctly or not is, uh, is using the uh, OpenQA web interface. Uh, so you see all the nice things, all the, everything is green and the world is nice and you don't have to worry about it. And when Slack actually stops working, that's when uh, it's interesting. So why would you like to use OpenQA? It's because OpenQA has a very user-centric uh, testing model. It doesn't hook into any special hooks anywhere. It it's literally interacts with the system under test just like a normal user would. So it looks at the screen. It tries to find stuff on the screen that, you, that, the, that the tester find, found that would be interesting in the scenario. So it could be the entire screen that you want to match or just a portion of it or whatever. It can type on the keyboard and it can move the mouse and click it. So that's the things that it does from a user-centric point. It also interacts with uh, yeah, the system in a, with a serial console. So th those are the four things that it does. And you may want to use OpenPayPitView because it's already been used quite a lot extensively in, out there. Uh, so for example, at uh, OpenSUSE, it's run over one million tests already uh, over the years. That's quite a lot. It's, the, the, the test time uh, that you would need to spend for this uh, to execute is of almost 25 years. So if you want to sit on a computer clicking the same things for 25 years, it's a not very exciting job. Uh, and it actually did find, uh, it has found or maybe prevented or however you want to put it, uh, approximately or nearly 1,000 months of the years. So instead of a user finding something, it found something and uh, it notified somebody about it. So who uses uh, OpenQA? Uh, obviously, Susa is using it on, on the enterprise Z products and desktops and the new CASP, the container as a service platform and all these things. So uh, Susa is definitely using it on the enterprise bits. It's OpenSUSE, the, the Open source of uh, distributions, that there's two distributions that are using it. Leap is the more traditional distribution, so it is like uh, Debian stretch and uh, it has a year uh, release cycle. And Leap is actually tuned to the enterprise bits, but uh, I'm not going to talk about this, there's no time. Uh, but the interesting bit is Tumbleweed. Tumbleweed is the de almost a daily distribution. And I say almost a daily distribution because otherwise it could have been a daily distribution where uh, there's a new release every day, but it is not because sometimes OpenQA will stop it. There's going to be a test that will cause uh, the release to be prevented. So the user doesn't get a broken system, it's prevented. And I'm not talking about just uh, something glitchy. I mean, there is, could be a scenario where, you, where you're doing an upgrade an upgrade from a previous version to the next version and the system doesn't boot because, oh, well, there's a symbol missing. Or you're installing things and, it's, and it doesn't install it because it stops up if the partitioner is broken or something, something silly like that. So this is almost a daily distribution because OpenQA prevents users from having a bad day. Uh, and who else is using it? Well, uh, Red Hat is using it. Uh, so yes, it's, it's not just SUSE, it's also Red Hat, the quote-unquote arch enemy. Uh, and when should you be using OpenJ if you're looking at this, uh, hmm, so these people are using it, when should you be using this, uh, this system? Whenever you want to do your test more than once and you expect the same results. Uh, this, this is always nice. So for example, in uh, install tests, uh, Install tests are pretty boring. You always have to type the same things, and you click the same things, you expect the same answers. And uh, this is not something you want to do because it's, bo it's boring. UI application tests are also possible. You put the system on the on desktop, you install the application inside the system under test, and then you can do everything that the user can do uh, with OpenQA. 
Uh, console applications, same thing. You can use Serial Console for text input output, uh, or you can use Screen if you would feel you like, either or. And you should also maybe look at OpenQA if you're trying to reinvent the same thing that is already existing uh, in this form. So if you're trying to reinvent a square wheel, uh, uh, don't uh, redo the same thing that already exists elsewhere. And there's a lot of effort done to make this uh, uh, function properly. Uh, I know it's very simple. You may think, so I just need something simple and uh, it just needs to match something here and there and it's, uh, it's going to be easy. But it, 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 it cascades and then we end up with special corner cases. Uh, and you also want to use this because testing is repetitive, so we end up with extremely high failure rates. And I can say failure rate in finding something interesting. So you do something once and you expect the result to happen, and you do it the same way and you, you get the results you expect. And this is very demotivating. Uh, I, I can't imagine a more demotivating job where you do the same thing and yeah, I expected this to happen, yep, it happened, yeah, no problem. It's very boring, so you just want to find things that, uh, that are interesting, so uh, things that you don't expect to happen, and that's, that's when you should be alerted, not what would happen, uh, we're just following the script and it's working, which is the boring bits. So can it actually, can it install Debian? Can, can, can we do OpenQA with Debian? Um, this is, this is uh, OpenQA installing Debian. Um, I've done these tests in just a few hours, and uh, that in the, was it was mostly just waiting for it to boot and I didn't uh, make any script specific stuff. And yes, it, every single interaction is a test, it's an assert where OpenQA has to match something and uh, click on something or type something. So, oh, uh, yeah, it booted into the desktop and it actually, uh, there's a testing user. Yeah, so it can test the Debian. And this is. Uh, not very really too informative, it's just a screenshot of the, of the console for tests where everything is fine. All the, each, every, every one of these green boxes is a screenshot and it's green because it passed. So that's all the tests. There's quite a few of tests, but it's, it's not difficult to make these. So for example, how do you define a test in OpenQA? There's two, there's the first file that you look for is called main.p. And uh, that's the main uh, parallel, parallel uh, file that loads. And here you, you can define a test, but uh, the best way is just to just to load another test. So uh, you just use the API here, which is you just type in, uh, for example, in the test for loading, for loading, uh, uh, for testing the, the, that installation. I just had three separate tests. I guess, one for booting, one for installing, and one for putting into the desktop and checking whether everything is fine. So there's the three files that you like to define. Uh, it's easier just file names, nothing special. And how is this test, for example, defined for booting? And it's, it's two lines of code. Um, so every test in OpenQA has a subroutine called run. <coughs> yeah, it's not, not difficult here. And API is very simple because it only interacts in, with the system under test very small uh, footprint, so it only looks at the screen, types something, or or moves the mouse and clicks it. So in this case, it looks at the screen and there's an assert screen. It looks for a bootloader for 15 seconds. If it doesn't find it, it will fail the test. If it finds it, there's a, a second it goes to second line and sends a key called return to boot it. That, that's it. And uh, for example, this is just a uh, quick way how how you define a area of interest in a, in a, in, in, in a, in a screenshot, which uh, OpenQA calls a needle because uh, it finds a needle in a haystack. And uh, the green bit is the highlighted area uh, at the bottom here, uh, where it's uh, continue. This is for finding the continue button, which is just a bitmap uh, in case of OpenQA, and it clicks in the middle of it. Uh, so it's assert and click. That's the command. It's not not uh, complicated. Uh, yep. uh, OpenQA and Debian. Uh, 
most of OpenQ dependencies are already in Debian archives. There is just a few things missing, and the, the OpenQ, the actual web application, could be installed shortly. And the nice thing about uh, DevConf is, by accident, I met the person that actually uh, has been packaging on these dependencies, and we've decided to collaborate on these things. Uh, so uh, Hideki, uh, where oh, there's Hideki right there, and uh, and if you would like to maybe join us, uh, help uh, to package these things, make some tests, and uh, reduce the burden on the user. Uh, or our user would be very, very nice. Uh, so I guess you can catch us here uh, on the, at the conference. I'll be here today and tomorrow, but IRC is always fine, or email. And there are some resources uh, uh, where you can get, I have some links there for, for, for source code for all these tests uh, for, for the installing Debian. Uh, you can look at them, they're very simple. And because if you look for, for example, at Fed Open Fedora, uh, uh, Fedora uh, OpenQ instance, which is also linked uh, here, or at uh, OpenSUSE uh, tests, which is on GitHub and also linked uh, in, in here. Uh, those who can get a little bit complicated uh, since they have various scenarios and uh, upgrade paths and RAID, non RAID scenarios for installation and upgrades, and etc. etc. So just looking at the simple uh, Debian installation. Script from uh, what you just saw for the, for the uh, installation uh, could be the better way to get started uh, with OpenQA. And I would like to also show you something. Uh, there is, I rerun these tests yesterday, and the interesting bit is, is it's big enough, I think. Uh, <laughs> The interesting bit is that these tests, they failed with the same ISO, and they failed here. So you get, this is a failure screen, you get, you, you get your output, and then you can see where, it, like, what it is matching against. So there is the, that is the expected screenshot, and the area where it is matching, that's the ex what, it, what, it, what is expected to see, but what it saw during the boot was, whoops, there was a virtual device, there's a name on it, so that's caused it to fail right there. So you have a comparison, what it expected, what it saw, right? And that is just, I'm not, ex I didn't look exactly why this happened, but this is because of the fail, maybe this area needs to be excluded because sometimes the device name appears, sometimes it doesn't. Uh, I don't know. So I think I think I'm almost out of time. Um, if you have questions, uh, I guess I can take one or two questions. I'm not an expert on OpenQA, I'm not a developer, just a basic user. Hi, uh, thank you so much for um, teasing me with uh, OpenQA because, of course, it has been interesting for the Debian installer. I'm one of the guys trying not to reinvent the square wheel too much, but uh, the last I checked, like in 2013, uh, you guys were storing uh, checksums and so on. So we couldn't just look at images and say which part changed and why and how and so on. So I'm really uh, interested in seeing this. I'm wondering, is there any way not to do some byte by byte uh, comparison? Is there a way to be a yes. bit blurry? It, it doesn't actually do byte by byte comparisons because it, it, there's a, there, there's a, there were problems with any of these things. I, I don't know what it did in the past. Mm -hmm. I just know what it does, kind of, I kind of know what it does now. And what it does now is basically, it, it takes the entire screenshot, the matching area is just, I think, in a YAML, no, YAML, or yeah, probably a YAML file. Uh, so it, it, you, you can have multiple matching area zones, you can have exclusion zones, so you, have, you can have a very complex matching area if you'd like to. 
and the matching algorithm, I think it, it reduces the color space and there is a fuzziness you can define on it. So it's, it, it's, it's not white by white comparison at all anymore, at least. Okay, perfect. And I guess it's, it might be pluggable, so one could exclude the banner at the top. So yes. when it gets updated for Debian and 10 or whatever, we can just exclude that part and keep the test working. I correct, guess. correct. You can you you can if you can either select which part of the screen you want to match. You can you can select which part to exclude in a match. So instead of just having a rectangular matching area, you can have uh, very complicated matching areas where you have a rectangle that is uh, that uh, that is matching, and inside this rectangle you can have an exclusion zone where you want to have the testing excluded. If, for example, one part changes, it, that is not important. Okay, talk to you soon. I'm going to leave the mic for whatever. Um, I was wondering, uh, especially about this uh, graphical part, it, it looks like this graphical part may be interesting standalone uh, regardless of the, the worker and the master. Is that uh, in the design possible at all? Or am I just saying something stupid because you need the rest as well? Uh, which parts? The graphical parts? So you, you're here saying, and you have, um, I guess you need a worker to actually interact with the uh, yes the actual device. But um, yes, it, it does the design allow for other workers, for instance. Uh, and in, in Debian, we have already invented the wheel. Uh, I guess for the part. Well, the worker interacts with the back end, and the front end is is what you see. <coughs> the front end is to to define the screenshots, define the matching areas. That's the front end bit. And the backend bit is, is, for example, the OS auto install, and it has it also has different <laughs> backends for that. So you can have uh, QEMU as a backend, and IPMI, and all uh, those things. Would the uh, front end also be usable uh, outside of uh, of this whole QA framework? Oh, you just want to use the front end without the backend? I I have no idea. But maybe, maybe <laughs> you could talk to uh, some people that work on these things. There's a there's a, a person you will find in Open SUSE IRC channel. Uh, you can ask uh, which they actually work on Open QA for their day job. So uh, yeah. uh, in this system, where where do the tests be? So in that end, we have a system that we call our package test. That each package has its own test inside of itself. So in, in this case, do you have a, a, like an external repository of the test or what? Yes, there's, if you go to the resources link up, uh, uh, I can link this, I guess, back. Uh, here we go, and the end, it's only few. If you go to the resources area, there's there's a there's a link to the GitHub repository, for example, for OpenSUSE tests, and it includes OpenSUSE tests for for Tumbleweed and Deep, and also the enterprise bit. That's like all of it. Uh, it it's like it's just a GitHub repository. Uh, I am assuming that. Red Hat has the same thing, but uh, you get you, you, in a, each of the tests. Uh, you can also click on the test, and you get a source code for the test. So, for example, here, if I scroll up, <coughs> where the test failed, like let's say install test. If you click on it, you get you get your source code for the tests. And and in logs and assets, there's uh, that's where the video is generated, and you have all the uh, installation script, like all step by step execution, and uh, yeah. So I think it's mostly for different uh, if you wish to have different type of uh, testing suites. Different scenarios, those kind of things. But yes, tests are on GitHub for OpenSUSE. It's quite a lot of. Them. <laughs> 
Okay, so we're out of time. Thank you for your attention.